Welcome to the Unicorn Circuit, your weekly dose of car news, banking, legal conundrums, car news, weird stuff off the internet, story time, banking, weird stuff off the internet, banking, random eat bag, and car news. Uh, this week, Martin, we've got something special going down, we've don't we? We've got a few special things going down. Do we? Well, yeah. obviously, there's lots of car news because that's what we don't do. Uh, but in story time this week, we've got something special, Martin, uh, something we've never done before. Uh, it's going to be really good. Uh, hang out for that. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, Martin, there's some big news in car news this week, such as what we're about to tell you after this graphical sequence. Let's make some noise for Kia. So Kia's Stinger. That's their like fast performance car. Um, <laughs> so that sounded so, that was a strange sentence. Car. It's a it's a performance car. Uh, the specs and the price have now been released. You can get a um, a two liter four cylinder, or you can get a three point three liter V six. And that has Brembo's. Are they turbo? LSD. Uh, one of them is turbo. Cool. I think the two litre four cylinder one's turbo. Good. Um, that one's like $45,000, $50,000. Then there's a GT line. That's like a special one. That one's up to $60,000. It's getting pretty pricey. Mm. Uh, and for that, you get a 360 de degree camera. Uh, have you seen those before? Oh, yeah, I have. But not on Where cars. It gives you a virtual thing. Oh, look down. So I went in a... I always get the name wrong. A Land Rover, a Range Rover. Sure. Which one? Is it a they're range? Both English, they're both owned by someone who's not English. Anyway, so the 360 camera, uh, how it worked on this car anyway, you put it in reverse, you can see your car from above like there's a drone above your car. So is there cameras all over the car? And it's I think they're all around the car pointing upward, then it's interpolating the image That's and cool. then putting it around a little model of your car. That's anyway, cool. so um, back to Kia, blind spot detection, cornering headlights, high beam assist, whatever that is, and heads up display unit. Now Kia say, it will bring passion and desire to the brand. Nice. Now, Martin, I reckon the word brand is the most bland and boring word in the planet. So when you put the word brand and then you mention passion next to it, to me, it just... It's also I'm just bored. Considering the, the word brand comes about from branding cattle and stuff as well. Like Does I it? But my, my branding, branding iron. Oh. Yeah, I don't know, it's got a bit of a weird, weird vibe, that word. Anyway, I think people are excited about it, or at least it's in the news because it's a Kia. It is going to be fast. There are going to be mods and stuff for it. Uh, and people are kind of seeing it as Kia's answer to the Commodore, which, of course, uh, has limited time left. That's right. And that's why people are talking about it. Speaking of Korean car brands, Hyundai also is shaking things up a little bit. Hyundai and Kia same. They might be. Someone will tell us, and then they'll tell us. Are they KDM? We'll uh, yes. Are they? They are. Um, they're shaking things up. They want to get rid of dealers. Um, now, this is an interesting sort of f philosophical thing. You know, shops are disappearing. You've seen those empty malls? Seen empty mall videos? Go check out an empty mall video. It's crazy. It's creepy. Anyway, shops are disappearing. Stuff's gone online. This we know. But will dealerships, will the same fate happen to dealerships? Do you reckon? Because currently you rock up to a dealership and you walk through the thing on your Saturday morning and you go, I want that one. And then you go and negotiate and you go to the next dealership and go, I want that one. Johnny said I can get it $1,000 Some people people want the ritual. They Some want to pay $10,000 more for a car so they can have a coffee and pretend that they're friends with Johnny who sold them a car. So some big car companies are starting to cut that out. There's some, uh, same thing happening with Tesla in some I thought states. dealers made no money anyway. Like, think, like from the sale of the car or very, very small margins, they're making their money from the servicing. Don't know. Martin, I want to ask you about something yeah go what is the deal with running in a car we're talking about brand new cars there seems to be two trains of thought and this is our discussion for the day we want to hear from the people some people are like thrash the pants off it yeah just thrash it bed the rings in yep oh other people are like keep it under a certain rpm for a certain amount of time different loads when you're driving fast slow different rpm ranges things like that but what difference can it make? Now, I know the internet's going to open up it. its wormhole and everyone's going to talk about it. And I'm really looking it's forward like, should to... Should you put it in neutral at the lights or hold the clutch in? I'm really looking forward... I am looking forward to reading the comments sometimes yeah. or not, but I actually am. Yeah. But what's the difference between, like, you've got a brand new car, wearing it in and not wearing it? Because what does... We wearing it in would suggest that something's getting, like, munched away. 
right? Yeah. So like bed it in. See, I don't, I don't actually have the answer. That's what I'll say first. But there's a few things to think about. Like one, all the metal bits in the engine, they get heat cycled, right? Yeah. So, okay, they're heat cycled. But from the second they're turned on at the factory, they're heat cycled. Yeah. I wonder how much difference that heat cycling makes for 50 Ks, 100 Ks, 1000 Ks, 5000 Ks. Like obviously smart stuff like changing the oil fairly early into the system kind of makes sense because yes. you run it in and then you get rid of any stuff that is in there. Residual leftover stuff from machining, but we're not in the 60s anymore. Mm. I reckon a lot of this stuff's pretty high tech these days. So I think that some of the some of the theories from way back in the day about running in, I reckon are a bit outdated now. Mm. But I don't know the answer and someone will tell us. Yep, I'm looking forward to hearing it. Martin, let's talk about BMW quickly and let's talk about the police. Uh, so Victorian police are taking, uh, what is it, a 530D. Does D mean diesel or does I D mean so. the D? I think it means <laughs> diesel. Uh, they're taking 80 of them. Now, in, if you're from Europe, you're just like whoop de dip uh, you've got a BMW police car. <laughs> in Australia, though, that's a big deal. whoop de dee Because we've all, we've all been Fords, we've been Holdens, yeah. and now we're talking about, like, it's 80 of them rolling Euro. around. Now, I want to segue in my own segue and talk about BMW. They're trying to get rid of car keys. And once they get rid of car keys, Martin, how are people going to attach their red chop tags? I don't know. How are they going to do these? that? Yes, one of those. One of those. How are people going to attach those to their just keys? To chop it to the, just attach it to their face. Attach it to your face. Martin, what they're saying, and I think it's a really good point, is now people are doing like keyless fobs, right? Do you like them? Do you like keyless fobs? What's that you've got there, Martin? Do you like keyless fobs? It's my friend's car key. <laughs> um, uh, uh, well, here's the confusing thing about fobs. Evo had a keyless fob. Did it? Yeah. Here's the confusing the thing about it, right? It. When you get like near a car, like an Evo, or a Focus RS, it'll automatically open the doors for you. Only if you put um, Oh, really? Anyway, the thing is, you put it in the car, then you take it out of the car, but you don't actually need to insert it into the car. So BMW is just like, that's just redundant. We don't need that anymore. They're talking about using an app. So when your phone's near the car, then that opens the door. And Tesla is looking at taking it one step further and just giving you like a credit card sized access port thing that goes in your wallet and when your wallet's near your car it's there. I get freaked out when you can't actually put a car key in there because I heard a story about someone, I don't know how this works or whether it's true, that started their car then they're like oh, I left something inside, ran back inside with their key or left it inside then drove to where they need to get to and then they couldn't turn their car off because then they wouldn't be able to start it again. Is that true? Is that a thing? It sounds like something. Uh, Harley Davidson. So there's all sorts of rules. As well. There's all sorts of rules and legalities about whether you know, like shutting cars off, because if you've got a key in your pocket and someone steals your car and you've still got your key and they take off and then it's out of proximity and it stops and it gets hit by a tram. Yes, it's your fault, right? Because you didn't leave the key in well, the car when you got. It I've always be, wondered though, like if is. someone's going to carjack you, what if you just peg your key? But then they can still drive it as long as they want, as long as they don't turn the car off. It's an interesting, interesting conundrum, and someone will tell us the answer. You know what has what um, key fobs? No. cordless, I'm going to call them cordless key fobs. Yes. SUVs. Do you know they're the most popular cars in the entire world? I know. Are they I know. really? I know. That's, the world that's is having a love them. affair with SUVs. Yeah. People love them. I want to know why. I think, I have a few ideas. You sit up really high in them. Yes. They're a lot more efficient than they used to be. They're not that big. They fit in standard car spots. They're practical if you like doing stuff and a lot of people the, the driving part is the least exciting bit for them. I don't think they're any their more canoe practical the than a station wagon, Martin. I'm just going to put that out they there. They sit higher. How does that make it more practical? Practical because you don't have to like bend down to put kids in them and things. I don't oh, right. Know. I don't know. See, because anyone talking about ground clearance or anything, you get a Tiguan or you get yeah. like a, um, what's Toyota's one? Like a RAV4 or something. Mm. You could get an Outback that's probably just as high. Yeah. You know? I don't know. I mean, I think they're trendy. They're cool. There was a period that, you know, I guess, you know, it was all about station wagons and now it's all about SUVs and soon it'll all be about micropods. The last thing I want to know from people who will tell us is about the Mitsubishi Evo 11. Yeah, sure. Yes. Is that an SUV? That's an SUV too, isn't it? Is it an electric SUV? Is it, did I read that right? Yeah. SUV. The headline is Mitsubishi's new Evo. Oh! Smashing the butt. Oh, it's an SUV that just is called an E Evolution that's not an Evo. As you were, man. Uh, no, that's pretty much it. Is it? Yeah. Great. All right. I'm done. Uh, What's the next one? Uh, weird, no, is that even weird? Is that even legal? Yes, it is. This week in Is That Even Legal, we're talking about Francais. French. French, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm rubbish at accents. People who are from France. French people. 
People from, yes, French people. Lovers of the baguette. Um, apparently, uh, uh, certain times of the day, like between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. at night, 70% of the music on the radio in France has to be by people who are French. Can anyone out there say the words beer can, but in an English accent? Now do it. That is how you say bacon in Jamaican. <laughs> Try it, Martin. Say beer can in an English beer accent. Can. Say it. Beer can. Beer can. What, was, what accent was that? Jamaican. That sounded Scottish. No, because you meant to say beer can in an English accent. So how does this relate to what's legal? Say beer can in an English accent. Beer can. See, now you sound Jamaican. I want some beer can. <laughs> oh, God. Is this a joke? Or is you know what I mean? Were you getting to the legal thing? That's it, the French thing. The French thing. 80%, 70% of the music on the radio in France has to be from French artists. So, and Birken. <laughs> what the hell? All right, there it is. Weird stuff off the Birken. This week in Weird Stuff from Unicorn, me, otherwise known as Weird Stuff. And the stuff. meme said that on it. it said, Did it? Yeah, it said, say beer can. Did you really can, like that meme? Say beer can in an English accent. That's, like a, that's like a pun, pun yeah. thing. Anyway, let's do it, Martin. What so have we got? This is funny. Don't look at that first. You've got to look at the actual funny thing. Funny thing. What this is it, Martin? This is the world's, the world's smallest, smallest underpants. underpants. With a five and a half inch waist, 14 centimeter waist. Um, why why these exist, I don't know. I but think somebody you put them on your fingers. Somebody I'm made them. I'm gonna put them on my fingers and then dance sexy for you, Martin. Somebody made them. Are you gonna do us a little dance here I'll on the do, table? I'll, I'm gonna do some sexy dancing. Look at that. Grab oh, that's hands. gross. <laughs> Dacked him. Yes. Dacked for everyone who's not Australian. I'm actually gonna the put them on. Of... Martin, I'm gonna put them on backwards, and there's a very important reason why, because that's the way your legs go. Do you know what I mean? Do, 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 do. So no, they I don't. Turn around, I can... No, they don't. Your knees go that way, dude. Do they? <laughs> You've got them on backwards on now. Wait on. Yeah. No, you're right. They do go, that, the knees they do go, go that, that way. Because the knees go like that. Hold on. Hold on. World's smallest underpants. Okay, good. I wonder what you're supposed to do with them. Touch my way on it. You're meant to, this is what I do. Hold on. <laughs> do you ever do them? Yeah. And try and land them on your head? <laughs> anyway, that was great. World's smallest oh, undies. Good. Well done. Martin, let's um, hook it into um, Thank my you. crap car. What? I know. Yes. What? Tricked ya, it's a crap car. My Crap Car is the segment where we show you guys crap cars. As you know, it's a spin-off off the spin-off. It's That's basically, right. it's a roundabout on a merry-go-wheel. Yes. Round. Well, well done. It's Spinning. a, a merry-go-round on a roundabout. That was good. Yes. On a Lazy Susan. Yes! On a DJ's turntable. Comedy. <laughs> Anyways. Um, we used to feature three crap cars Maybe in the show, and then some again. people were just do like, we no, no, we're not we starting again. Start and people again. are like, hey, that car was third, but that wasn't in the title, and that one was second, and I wish you'd just do that. So my crap car, it's, it's, we're evolutionising it. We're doing the Mitsubishi uh, on it. Um, we're now going to be featuring one crap car per episode, um, because... They're just too good. They're that, just too good. What's been coming in is too good. It's like a piece of deep-fried tofu... You don't want bacon next to yeah. that. Bacon. Have them separate. You don't want bacon <laughs> next to it. I <laughs> adore you? you just, you just, you want them separate. So anyway, uh, my crap car is now going to be uh, out at least once a week, maybe more. That's up to you. What? We would love to see your crap cars. Send us a video of your crap car to mycrapcar at theunicorncircuit.com and you can check out the latest episode by clicking on that thing up there that says, click me. Do it. There you go. Um, that next was, up, that was weird. it is thanking. Thank you. 
Thanking is the delightful art of recontextualizing the name of a product by taking a photo of it down near your crotch and then putting it on the internet so everyone can see how much of a legend you really are. That's right. We get thanks from all over the world and they just, they come streaming into the face balls. Thick and fast, overnight, while we're asleep, everywhere. All over the place. And so we are clean them all up and then we put them in a folder so we can show them to you. Let's just hook right into it, everybody. And first up, boom. The cock water tank. Bung, 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 bung. Well done, Martin. Excellent. That's the cock shooter set. Excellent. You've got hard, old, sour, and man. Nice. Well, I don't even know what that means, mate, but I'll have a laugh at it. That's... Organic hair cure. No. Coffee thickening poo. Oh, no. people put coffee in their hair to thicken it. Do they? Apparently, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Hiding in plain sight. Well done. Never seen that before. Yep, that's that's a good thanking technique, man. A root. In Australia, a root is what we call the part of the tree that connects it to the ground. Well done. A thank out of one word. It's impressive. Well done. Martin Fresh Balls. Red Fox. What do they do, do you reckon? Uh, I reckon they're air freshener balls, maybe? They look a bit gym, weird. Put them in gym bags. Oh, is that what do it's called? Do you allegedly smell? Martin, that's blowing a can. <laughs> good. Carry it with you everywhere you need to go. Martin, that's some yummy nut pleasure. Good. I like that too. Well done. I love seeing products from different like places around the world. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's the first time we've seen this. Oh, what's with that guy's arm? What's he doing there, though? What's with his arm? What's he and what's this bit? What's he holding up? with his hand? <laughs> what? Why is he 275 grams? That's a lot. Martin, this one here says maybe you touch your genitals. <laughs> hand sanitizer. <laughs> We need to make our own hands. That's advisor. excellent. That's excellent. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> getting right into that's it. Right. Good on you. I love, the, I love the safety high views. Martin, that's a nut roast. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that not Fank of the Week? That must be a good oh, Fank of the Week that, uh, if that's not Fank of the Week. What word is that, though, now? Plenish. No, without the L. How do you say that? Penish. Penish. That's a weird word. Is it? Why did they say plenish? Why it's replenish? Why have they censored the word milk? Milk's got an asterisk instead oh, of the this I. On purpose, man. Organic coconut milk. Sea salt. We put organic rice and coconut and sea salt in it. That sounds gross. <laughs> That's really bad. Martin No Balls. <laughs> Just like um, what's that guy's name? Oh. What's the guy's name off Game of Thrones with no balls? Oh my god, Game of Thrones What's again! Not again! What's his name? Not he's, he's, the, he's got the little whisperers. No one cares. Um, no, actually, no, half the world oh, probably what's cares. His name? Most people with a TV and a subscription he got right in the end, though. Streaming subscription. Join Team D! No one Team else Dragon! Else. No one here cares. Daenerys, damn it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well done, Cock that's bum. a good one. Cock and bum. Well done. Yeah, impressive. Fank art. That's just that's that's just a bonus. That's excellent. Well done. Two point three miles. Not too far to go. Martin Jack Oil. That's you know what that's for. Sure. And coming up, Martin, we Fank do of have. Week. It's going to be good. Fank of the week. Is it gonna I be think good? so. Are you ready, Martin? Can you do? It? <laughs> Auntie's dick. <laughs> <laughs> well done. We would love to see your thanks. You can send them in uh, to the Thanking Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash thanking daily uh i'm sure there's a dot com or there's something uh, you'll it's work it out. on the thing you'll find it martin take Next us up, to a new place it mate is my town My Town is a delightful art of you taking us and all the viewers of Unicorn Circuit to your town. Take us on a tour, show us some cool stuff, film it this way. No wind noise, don't put any music on it, just talk to us and show us what you got. This week is a particularly mad My Town where we're going to America. Is it Ohio? Did I believe someone it is. Say? I believe is it, it Ohio is. there? And uh, keep your eyeballs out for an incredibly large automotive store. In Australia, we don't have a lot of big ones. Actually, the super cheap auto in Penrith That's huge. is freaking That's huge. Um, but we don't have a lot of big ones. Uh, in America, they seem to do it big, and this one is big. Hello, Unicorn Circuit. My name's Terry, and this is my town, Akron, Ohio, USA. Home of the Soapbox Derby and the Goodyear Blimp. And there's the original blimp hanger. Akron's the rubber city, like Bridgestone. Firestone and Goodyear Tire. Akron's also the home of LeBron James. This is where he went to school. 
We also have Summit Racing, which is the biggest auto parts superstore in the world. Let's go get some parts. This is one of our favorite parks. It's overlooking that Cuyahoga River. You can do lots of kayaking and boating there. This is our last stop on our My Town. This is a 300 year old signal tree used by the Native Americans to navigate the river. Thanks for watching Unicorn Circuit. Solid launch in the Rexy there, Martin. Solid effort. Good How effort. do people send us an image of their town, Martin? Um, you can send your My Town video, just upload it to YouTube, do it as unlisted, do what you've got to do. Send us a link and we'll get it. And you send the link to My, My Town, town at, at the unicorn unicorn dot com. Com. Now, Martin, this is when the show gets real. It's getting We're hitting the peak of what Kilimanjaro you've been waiting for. now. You've been waiting for this. You've been waiting for you this. You just didn't know it yet. It's story time. This week in story time, Marty and I have each made a video for your viewing pleasure of what we did on the weekend. It's Neither like, of us know what the other one did, but we're going to see when we see the video. It could have been me just sitting on a cactus. Mm -hmm. It could have been you on a roller coaster. No one knows. Should we rock, paper, scissors to see whose video goes first? Yes. And they ready? get to choose. You ready? One, two, three. Um, you can go first. I'm going first. All right, so this is what I did on my weekend. Check it out. So this is a car show at Berrimer, which is in the Southern Highlands, just outside of Sydney, about an hour and a half south. Uh, it's like a fundraiser thing for a school in the community, but people bring out all sorts of mad cars. And a mad thing about the Southern Highlands is that there's a whole lot of awesome cars hiding here in garages. People still have room in their houses and all packed together in a big city. And you find this really cool collection of stuff, including things like motor compost. But among that, there's lots of cool old Aussie stuff, there's some American stuff, there's some slightly older Japanese stuff, which is cool as well. So we're gonna have a little bit of a look around. The worlds have been blended. Yes, that will fit your Mazda, MX-5 specifically. Classic VT Commodore. Not a Mini. English, but not a Mini. That's a Mini. Duck. 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 Goose. So this is the stationary engine section. Um, basically, kind of like cars, except they're stationary and they're engines. And the dudes uh, sit around and look at the engines and talk about the engines and um, have a good day out. That was awesome, Martin. Stationary engineering. Not stationary, I didn't even know they were a thing. Is that, a, is, that, is that like a car meet, but for engines, it's, but you just sit there and look at the engine Well, working. this car meet was cool. Like, it was out of Sydney, which is cool. So you get this, this really big variety of like, of cars which I loved and they also had like tractors there and old trucks and like some modern stuff and motor compost as you saw may or may not have belonged to mechanical stick um, and then they had a stationary engine section that's amazing and there's just there's just tons of them sitting all around and there's like and how basic they are but how cool they are like they used them in the 20s to shear sheep like they'd run all their shearing stuff off it they yep. put a bit of water in the top put some kind of fuel in I don't know what it wouldn't have been the most refined stuff back in the day and it sits there and every three rotations it fires a thing and they run stuff three horsepower from that little box which is pretty incredible that's awesome Awesome. Mm. Well, Martin, speaking of old school enginery, um, I also had an automotive themed weekend. Some of you may have seen uh, the video that went up about fixing up an old GN 250 and I got it ready in time for a special event that was this weekend uh, just gone. 
Yeah? Mm. Yes. Was it? Was that yesterday? Was that only yesterday? Yeah. No, day before yesterday. Yesterday? I don't know. I think it was yesterday. I'm just freaking out. Anyway, this is what I did on the weekend. So on the weekend, I went on the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride, which started at Sydney University. I took my little GN250, which is a build that I've been working on for a little while, and it was finished just in time for the cruise. Now, the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride is an organization that raises money for prostate cancer and men's health. It supports the Movember Foundation. And this year, they had over 90,000 people riding all at the same time in different places around the world. This little bike was called Taps skateboard for a seat epic uh, it was amazing lots of really cool people there lots of really cool bikes they try and keep the bikes kind of uh, in a classic style because that way it means that numbers don't get too high if they just put on a cruise and just said anyone's welcome it would be just too many Sydney itself there was around one and a half thousand riders when it was time to leave it took about an hour to get out of the university just because there were so many bikes spilling out onto Sydney streets what they do do really well though is they send out people in advance onto all the different street corners so that when you're riding along there's people there with signs showing you which way to go. It's a really good day out, really fun, lots of cool people, lots of really cool bikes like this one and so far they've raised over four and a half million dollars which is very impressive and it's amazing that a Sydney like Sydney uh, the council and the police allowed this to take place because um, it was a lot of people and a lot of bikes and a lot of closed streets and a lot of disruption so it's amazing that things like this are allowed to take place. So there it is, more beards and classic motorbikes than you can poke a smashed avocado sandwich at. More stationary engines you can just stand there. They're, they're hypnotizing, I have to say. Like they're just The motorbikes? Well, oh, are we talking about your video Yeah, again? the stationary engine goes inside okay. the bicycle. Like think about it, how that came to be, man. Someone had a bicycle and then their stationary engine was there and they went and then the motor motorcycle was born. Amazing. Uh, there it is, everybody. That is story time. A little bit of story told through the eye of the ball holder. See? Martin, it's time. <laughs> what? Next up is random eat bag. Random eat bag. Of course, every week we get something out of this bag that a nice young lady gave us. Here it is. Yep. Um, and this weekend, Martin, we're we slowly working magic. our way through all these weird things. We've got the... Thai... Thai... Peeba. Thai Kisk. Peeba. Original. Uh oh, it's hot. Now, it's got a picture of flames on it, Martin. Now, one flame is mild, two flames is strong, and three flames is hottest. Last week we had sour, didn't we? Yeah. And now we've gone for hot. I would tell you about this, but I can't read anything. I don't even know where this is from, mate. Uh, it's from Finland. It's from Helsinki. I've been to Helsinki. I ate a bit of salted cod there. Uh, it expired a while ago, do we care? No, of course not. Okay, good. Let's just talk into it. I love Helsinki, Martin. All right, this is a... A... Mm, a hot... Oh, Turkish peeba. There you go, Martin. It doesn't look... It looks like a small animal. It's amazing. I uh, thank you for watching the Unicorn Circuit. We try and get here every week unless we don't want to and then we don't. Cheers, Martin. Cheers, mate. And uh, happy days. Thanks for watching. This is a Turkish... Peeba. Oh, it's not too bad. And it's real aniseedy. It's not too bad. It kind of tastes like, um... Oh. No, it's getting worse. <laughs> no, it's getting Can I spit it out? Do you mind? No, you can't spit it out, man. Why not? Oh, oh, no. no. <laughs> oh, that's ah. really bad. Ah. Oh. Blech. That's horrid. I don't recommend it. No. Oh. Is it possible they're meant to be administered rectally? <laughs> Quite possibly.